Let's do a quick little review of complex numbers. Um, complex numbers, again, come from the form. If we had an equation like x squared minus 1, let's say this was a function, right? And I wanted to find the zeros. So we set this equal to 0, right? And we could solve this by difference in two squares, or we could also solve it by the square root method. So if I solve it by the square root method, I need to take the square root of both sides, and I get a plus or minus 1 equals x squared. Right? So you could say, oh, I'm sorry, equals x. So therefore you could say the zeros of this are x equals positive 1, x equals negative 1. Right? Now, like on your homework quiz, you guys had a problem that looked like this. Alright? And if I said find the zeros. So you set this equal to 0. And again, let's go ahead and solve it by uh, um, square root method. So I'll subtract 1 on both sides. Now we have an issue because now we're trying to take the square root of a negative number. So I'm asking what two numbers multiply to give you negative 1 that are exactly the same. And we know that's impossible, right? Because negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Positive 1 times positive 1 is positive 1. Negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1, but those aren't exactly the same. So therefore, what we do to replace our negative 1 is we say plus or minus i equals x. So i is going to be what we call our imaginary unit. So imaginary unit equals the square root of negative 1, which is equal to i. Okay? So that's your imaginary unit. Now we talked about complex numbers um, and so forth. So now when we want to talk about complex numbers, complex numbers have an imaginary unit, but also a real part. So when looking at complex numbers, all complex numbers can be in the form of A plus BI, where your A and your B are your real numbers, are real numbers, and I is obviously your imaginary. All right, and then the A is what we call the real part of an imaginary number, and this is what we call our imaginary part. Hey, can I grab something out of Kelsey's I'm sure. Okay. So you have your real part, and then your imaginary part. Okay. Question. Okay. All right. Um, so, just, oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So that's pretty much your general definition of your real and imaginary. Now, the next thing that we're going to go through is at least operations. So, does everybody have this loose written down? To go through. On this? Everybody has this written down? Because I'm going to erase it. So now, the next thing we're going to be talking about is. Thank you. Sorry. You're welcome. All right. So now, if we know that i equals the square root of negative one, let's kind of go up the let's kind of go up the ladder then again. If i multiply by i, so i equals negative one. So if um, if i multiply by i times i, that means I'm going to take. We know that that would represent i squared which is equal to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which is 1. Very good. All right, so let's just kind of write this here. i equals the square root of negative 1. i squared equals 1. Now, let's do i times i times i. That equals i cubed, which is equal to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Well, square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 is? 1, and then 1 times the square root of negative 1 is the square root of negative 1. But what is the square root of negative 1 equal? I. That's not right. What did I get wrong? Um, no, no, no. This is negative 1. Square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 is negative 1, right? So this equals uh, negative 1 times i, right? Because that's going to produce negative 1. 
A negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which is i, is going to produce a negative i. So therefore, i cubed equals negative i. And then let's we'll do this one more time. i times i times i times i equals i to the fourth, all right, which equals the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Well, we know all of this, ladies and gentlemen, equals negative i. So if I do negative i times another i, that's going to be a negative i squared. i squared equals negative 1. A negative negative 1 is now going to leave me with a one positive 1. Yes? Um, for, it, you said that x squared was negative 1, but you didn't put that in the chart. i squared equals negative 1. Yes, I didn't put that in the chart. Thank you. So, by doing all that, that's what you guys are going to want to learn. Now, I can go back through an i to the fifth. I'm not going to write it all out, but we know that if I do i to the fifth, that's going to be i to the fourth times i. Yes? I don't need to write all the i's out. Well, i to the fourth is 1 times i is just going to be i. And i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So what I want you guys to understand is this repeats after i to the fourth. And this pattern repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats. All right, so why is that important? Well, when we get into our operations, which I'm just going to do a quick little synopsis for you, um, we're not going to really do too much with operations. But when we do operations of complex numbers, sometimes we're going to have to simplify them. All right, so I'm just going to do two problems. Um, first of all, let's do 3i times 5 minus 2i. So I'll do that example. I'll do example here. Um, 2i plus uh, 1 plus i times 3 minus i. All right, so let's just go through the multiplication because that's what we're primarily going to be doing. Um, and actually, let's do a, yeah, let's do multiplication. So if I was going to do multiplication, apply distributive property, and apply FOIL. So distributive property here, what we're going to do is we're going to treat the i just like it's a, just like it's a variable. So this would be 15i minus 6i squared. However, we determined that 6i squared is, or i squared is negative one. negative 1. So therefore, I can write this as 15 times i minus 6 times Negative one. negative 1. And then the last thing that's even more important is we, if you guys wrote down, we need to write this in our standard form, which is a plus bi. Right? So therefore, this problem looks like 15i plus 6. But I need to write it in a plus bi form. So I write it as 6 plus 15i. All right? And then if I was going to do this problem, if you just do your FOIL, you get 3 minus i plus 3i um, minus i squared. All right, now what's important about this, ladies and gentlemen, is our i's, we can combine them, right? Just like x and negative x and 3x. This is going to become 3 plus 2i minus i squared, which is negative 1. So therefore, we have minus a negative 1, which would be a positive 1. Positive 1 plus 3 is going to be 4. 4 plus 2i. Follow? All right. Um, just to kind of make this a nice little summary video, I'm just going to do division here real quick. Can I erase this top two? Because yeah. all in this class, pretty much we're going to be dealing with is multiplication and division this year. So let me do five pro or two problems. So let's do five over i and seven. So I'll do two examples for you. 7 over 3 minus i. OK. Can I erase the blue? Huh? Can I erase the blue? Almost. Ah, I swear, last teaching I'm going to make. Look, look at it, we're almost done, right? Almost done. All right, so now we talked about multiplication, and now it's going to talk about division. So if I have to divide, now let's think about this. I is imaginary, 
I'm trying to divide imaginary number into a real number. Can you kind of wrap your head around what that kind of felt like possible? It just kind of looks weird, right? Like that's kind of saying like we know two divides into ten, right? Two divides into ten five times. However, think about the number pi. Pi goes on and on and on and on and on forever. So is it possible for us to divide pi into 10 evenly? Well, as far as we know, no, because we don't have, it's an irrational number. So we don't like to divide irrational numbers into um, our whole numbers, or integers, or real numbers. So here, we also don't like to divide imaginary numbers, all right, or complex numbers. So what I want to do is, a lot of times now pi, we don't really, there's not really much we can do about it. But if you guys remember, if I had 5 over the square root of 3, and 7 over 3 minus the square root of 3. When we had square roots, which there are or irrational numbers in the denominator, does everybody remember what we did in algebra 2 for this? Yes? We would multiply each top and bottom by the square root. Right. And why would we do that? To get rid of the square root. Yeah, you get rid of the square root. Right? If I multiply the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, right? That now changes this to a problem of 5 squared 3 over positive 3. Now I don't have a square root on the bottom, right? So what do you think we're going to want to do up here? Multiply, multiply by, by, I. by I, because if I multiply by I, I get I squared, and I squared is negative 1. Negative one. And it's OK, as long as we multiply the same number on top and bottom, what we have is equivalent fractions. So here we have 5i over negative 1, which just equals a negative 5i. All right. But then when we had an expression, you remember in the back what we multiplied by? It's a really, really funny, the funny whole name. Thing. Huh? The whole thing. Right. But we change something. We change signs. Yeah. So what do we call when we have to change signs? Ava, do you remember the name? Do you remember the name? I want the name. Do you remember the name? Close. Huh? Close. Conjugate? Oh, yeah. No. Conjugate? Ronjugate? So you multiply by the conjugate. Now, does anybody know why we multiply by the conjugate? What does the conjugate do? The conjugate produces, what, is the, what does this look like? Because this times, look, what kind of factoring? Yeah, but what kind of factoring had this? What square root? It's the, 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 the thing we just The difference of two squares, right? And yeah, the difference of two squares had a squared term minus another squared term. And exactly what you said, the middle terms are eliminated, or they add up to zero. Right, so they're eliminated or cancel out. So here, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. So the conjugate of three minus i is going to be three plus i. All right. So now I multiply on the top, so that becomes twenty-one plus seven i. And on the bottom, difference of two squares. We know that the middle terms add up to zero, so I just need to multiply the first terms and the last terms. So three times three is nine. Negative i times negative i is a negative i squared. i squared is a negative 1. 9 minus negative 1 is going to be a, that's a positive, so it's 10. So now I have 10 on the bottom. <coughs> However, is that in the form of 8 plus bi? No. Yes. Yes. Wait. Is, what's my a then? 1. But a is being divided by 10 though, right? Oh, you got to take Right, you got to take the 10 and divide it into both terms. So I got to write, write this as 21 over 10 plus 7i over 10. Because both of my a and my b are being divided by 10, so I want to represent that in that form. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, that is a whole class period of review of all you need for complex numbers. All right, so.